Hey guys, what's up? And today we're gonna do the mid-year book tag. One month, too late. <laughs> the mid-year was July. Why? Don't ask me. There's 12 months in a year, June is the sixth month. You think it would be easy, but for me obviously not. So now we're doing the mid-year book tag. Um, I did add some of the books that I did read in June, so technically not really mid-year, but it's fine. It is fine. So yeah, some of the questions I'm not gonna answer because I just don't have anything for them. Um, so yeah. Let's get to it. The first question is, what is the best book you've read so far this year? And this year, it's a nonfiction. I didn't, I didn't think it would happen. I am not a huge lover of nonfiction. I've kind of been getting into it a little bit more, but for it to be my best book of the year, it's crazy. It's, it's a moment for me. My best book is Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. I like to listen to my nonfiction on audiobook and I, find that I really enjoyed them a lot better and so Bad Feminist really did it for me. It was so good. It is about Roxane Gay and it's a bunch of essays talking about womanhood and the things she does that makes her feel like a bad feminist and it also talks about the black experience as a woman as well and it's just so amazing. It's just so good. If you don't like nonfiction, um, I highly advise Roxanne Gay. I want to read all of her work, but this one was really good, and I'm glad I finally read it because it's been on my TBR for a long ass time. So the next question is, what is the best sequel you've read this year? And I am not a sequel person. I am not someone who reads a series very often, even though you're literally sitting on a <laughs> on a book of series. But I really don't read series very often. Um, so this one is not quite a sequel. It's more of a companion, which I consider a sequel because it takes place in the same realm. It's fine. And this is one I read in June and I read both of the books and both of them show up on here. They're so good. So amazing. Um, they make me cry. Um, but it is Behind You by Jacqueline Woodson. This book really did it for me. This is a continuation of If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson and this is more of the grieving process, how to move on without forgetting um, after someone dies and it's beautiful. Um, I think it's beautifully written, it's multi-perspective so people who love multi-perspective books, like I do, really, I really enjoyed it. So if you like multi-perspectives, this is the book. And you technically don't have to read this or you technically don't have to read If You Come Softly before reading this because um, it picks up and it explains what has happened. Um, it's the perspective of the person who dies as well. So you kind of get an insight to it. It's really just a companion. It's not necessary. Um, I just really loved If You Come Softly, so I ordered this right away. And it's really, really good. It's really short. It's only like 120 pages. So I highly recommend it. The third question is a new release that you haven't gotten to yet. And I have a lot of new releases that I'm really anticipating um, that I still haven't gotten to. And in July, there's quite a few that I'm really excited for. But as of right now, My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is a book that everyone is talking about. My Dark Vanessa is a book that I've been really wanting to get to just because it's very interesting. It's about a teacher-student relationship and how after all these years have passed, she's realizing that maybe it wasn't as good <laughs> as it was um, at the time. And yeah, it sounds really interesting. The next question is my most anticipated read for the second half. So my most anticipated that's going to come out in the second half of the year. And this one I'm so excited for. It sounds so amazing and I loved her first book and I'm hopefully going to get to her second book because I just bought it. Um, but it is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I love Tiffany D. Jackson. I've only read Monday's Not Coming but it is absolutely incredible. I love the writing, I love how the story pans out, and even though it's really heartbreaking, it's really, really good. I think Grown is going to be 
just as amazing. I uh, want to get to Allegedly this year as well, so I want to read all of her work. Um, I'm not sure about uh, Let's Hear a Rhyme, I think that's what it's called. Uh, I don't think that's really up my alley. Um, I kind of like her mystery ones more. This one is about the music industry and how um, it can be quite messed up and there's a murder within there and it just sounds amazing. I'm probably going to pre-order it. The fifth question is my biggest disappointment and this one was super easy. I have had a lot of meh books this year. I've had a lot of three stars but the three stars aren't quite disappointing because I didn't expect too much from them but this is a book that's been on my shelf for forever. It's been through unhauls and I read it, I finally read it, and it was not great. It is Still Alice by Lisa Genova. I am unhauling this, so it will be off my shelves, but I think I gave this two stars. Um, this book, I just could not connect with Alice, and this is a book that is very character driven, and it's not, if you don't relate to Alice, or at least like like her, which I didn't, you're not gonna like this book. It was boring to me. Like I like the writing. That's the only thing that kept me reading this book and finishing it. The writing was really well done. Um, yeah. So this is basically about a woman who is a, a psychology professor at Harvard and she gets diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And there's this whole plot of if she can't remember the answers to certain questions, then she kills herself. And then that plot goes right out the window, and how it ends is just like, why? It's like, I just need something big to happen in it, and this was basically just her going through the process of Alzheimer's. And it wasn't that interesting, which sounds really bad, but like, nothing happened, I didn't care about Alice. So this was a huge, huge letdown. Now on to my biggest surprise, and I will tell you, this is the biggest surprise I've had in years. There's contemporary reads that I'm like, oh my gosh, like I didn't think I was going to like this as much, or a book that I've never heard of and I really love it. Um, there's those moments, but in a contemporary, I'm not quite surprised because I love contemporary. This <laughs> was a moment for me. I didn't know whether to give it five stars or not because I was like, um, I don't think I was supposed to enjoy it as much as I did. But I did. And am I ashamed of it? A little. But it's fine. And it is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover is a very controversial writer. I've read Colleen Hoover's Maybe Not, which is like a novella between two books that I, I didn't know. Um, anyway, I didn't like that one. That one rubbed me the wrong way. But this one, this one has a sense of mystery to it, which I think made me like it because I DNF'd a book in June. Um, <laughs> you can look at my wrap up for June, but I DNF'd a book in June because it was a romance. I don't think I get along with fluffy romance, but this book had an element of a thriller. So you don't really know what's wrong with Miles because Miles acts weird and refuses to get in a relationship. And so Tate is like, hey, like, what? Why? <laughs> and so it's basically you switching between perspectives. Miles from six years prior, I think, and then Tate, um, the current moment. Miles' perspective is a lot more interesting because you're trying to figure out what the hell happened. And, but Tate, I, it was just a good book, but Miles' perspective is a lot more interesting because you're trying to piece together the clues to try to figure out why he's like the way he is. And did I cry in this book? Yes. Was this the first romance that I ever read? Yes. And it is a romance, but there's a thriller element to it that made me love it so much. I just don't think I can read just regular romance. So this was definitely a surprise. The next question is a favorite new author. And I don't have a favorite new author yet. I have to read a couple of their works before I fully decide if they are a favorite new author. But I do have some authors that are on their way to becoming my favorite author. I have Jason Reynolds. I read Long Way Down by him this year and 
it's so good. I also bought the All American Boys recently, so I will be hopefully reading that soon. I know it's co-authored, but Jason Reynolds is one of the authors, so I'm really excited to get to that and some of his other work. And then I have Tiffany D. Jackson. Obviously, Monday's Not Coming really made me fall in love, and I hope I really like Allegedly and Grown, and then I may read her other book. And then I have Jacqueline Woodson. She is the author of If You Come Softly and Behind You, and those books are just so incredible. I know Jacqueline Woodson has so many books. Not all of them interest me, but a lot of them do, and I know she she kind of wavers the line between her writing. She does middle grade, YA, and also adult, and she might even do children's, but it's just, her writing is just so amazing. The next question is your newest favorite character, and mine has to be Claudia from Monday's Not Coming. This girl, this girl is, oh, she's a trooper. Um, she made me cry. She's just, I don't know, there's just something about her that she's just such a powerful woman. And, well, she's a girl, actually. But she's just a powerful girl going to grow up into such a powerful woman because of the things she's been through. And she's just so loyal to her friend that nothing can stop her, no matter if she's beaten down, if she's told she's crazy, like... I don't know. She, it's it's mostly because she's a loyal friend, and this book is over 400 pages. So you slowly fall in love with Claudia and how intense and how hard she tries and to find out what happened to Monday, and it just breaks your heart with what happens. It just breaks your heart to see Claudia fall. It's just. I don't know. There's just something about Claudia that is very intriguing and you just can't stop reading this book. The next question is um, a book that made you cry. And I originally had Monday's Not Coming on here. And then I read If You Come Softly. <sighs> this book tore me apart. So this is a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. Was unaware when I bought it. Um, I saw the cover and it was about an interracial couple and I've been on the search for a good representation of a interracial couple because a lot of them don't talk about the challenges or the beauty of a interracial couple and so I was on the search and I found her. I found the book <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. It's only like 180 something pages but this book packs a punch. It made me ball. Um, <laughs> I mean, it could be that I was imagining my boyfriend in this, <laughs> in this role of Romeo, but oh no, I wasn't ready. It came fast. It was abrupt. Not like a bad abrupt. It was like, you knew it was looming. It was looming, but you weren't ready. Um, I read this in one day, obviously, and... I don't know what else to say about this book. This is just a super incredible book. It is just about them falling in love and then we all know Romeo dies in the end of Romeo and Juliet. So that's when I knew something was wrong. Also the author's note, literally, I read the author's note and it wasn't quite a prologue because it was foreshadowing what happens, um, but I literally just cried. The next question is a book that made you happy, and this one's super easy as well. This one is a graphic novel. It is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jenny Wang, and this book was so good. Um, I usually don't give graphic novels anything above three stars, and this book got four stars, and it was just a wholesome read, and it's about a prince and his dressmaker, and how he prefers to wear dresses, but he really can't go out wearing dresses because um, he's the prince. So so it's a very interesting story of, I guess, found family and figuring out who you want to be and who you want to present yourself as and what makes you the happiest. So by the end I was just smiling and it was just a great read. The next question is a book to movie adaptation and I haven't read any books 
besides Still Alice that are that I know of that are book to movie adaptations. So I've decided to twist the question a little bit and do a book that I wish and hope will become a movie and it is Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. I absolutely love this book. I think that this would make a great movie. It is very interesting and I would love to see how they portrayed all these characters on the screen because they're wild. They are a mess <laughs> and um, they're just so flawed but they're also really really great characters and I would just love to see what this had to offer on the screen. The next question is the prettiest book cover you got this year and I'm 95% sure I bought this this year and it is The Child Finder by Renee Denfield. Just look at that cover, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I read this this year as well and I really enjoyed it. Um, it is a book about a child finder, Naomi, and she is on the search for um, Matheson, I think her name is. And Naomi gets glimpses into what happened to her when she was a child because she was also a missing child. And it's just, it's beautifully written. I absolutely loved it. But the cover is stunning and that's pretty much the reason why I bought it. Well, now on to the final question and the final question is what books are you planning to read? What books do you still need to read this year? And I have a lot. These are just from my shelf um, that I want to read this year. Um, there's plenty of other things on my shelf that I would like to read but these are the ones that I really want to read. I probably won't get to them but we'll see. The first one is Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. White Orlander by Janet Fitch, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, and I'm, I've started it. The Vault of Dreamers by Kara M. O'Brien, Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson, Piecing Me Together by Renee Watson, Sophie's World by Justine Garter, and Final Girls by Riley Sager. So those are all the books on my shelf that I really want to get to by the end of the year. Um, I'm hoping to get through at least a few. I know I'll at least get to Allegedly and probably um, get through Handmaid's Tale, um, but I really, really hope I get to those. I've been going back to the library now, um, so I just keep bringing books in so that I start reading first. Um, so hopefully I get to those. I'm really excited for all of them, and so far, I think this year has been a success. I've had a lot of three stars, but I had a five star. My very first book was a five star. And I think I've had a five star almost every month this year so far. So we're doing better than we were last year. Last year was a struggle. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one.